again to Coaching Conversations with me, Steve Crabb and Marie Taylor. Hello everyone. The topic of conversation today is going to be about how to prepare yourself for a coaching and mentoring session. So we're going to get some great tips from Marie, so let's get going. So Marie, mm -hmm. lots of clients, yeah. lots of different needs. How does a coach prepare for such a wide range of choices and situations? Where do mm. they start? Where yeah. do we start? Nice question. Um, well, I think there's when you're coaching a number of people and, as you say, different needs, there's an assumption that we can keep track of all of them and the reality is that we often can't. So we need some systems in place to help us to do that. Nothing too rigorous or onerous, but just a sense of being able to anchor ourselves, if you like, back into the client and their experience before we see them for a session. So what I tend to do is suggest that coaches do probably three things actually. Think about the coaching notes, reviewing the coaching notes before each session. So going over actually, you know, what are the outcomes this person's looking for from coaching? What did we do last time? Mm -hmm. But not only what do we do, what do we cover, but actually if you've been coaching someone for a long time or a period of months, what are we doing that's working for them? So one of the things that I that really gets on my nerves is when a coach says, you know, I've got, I, I use a coaching model, it's this one. Because if you've only got one coaching model in your FRT, well, what if that client doesn't actually respond mm -hmm. to that coaching model? Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that I often suggest to people is make sure you're tracking what is working for your client in terms of coaching models, in terms of the way that you're working with them. So you're recording not just, you know, some kind of coaching log. You're recording not just what we're doing in the coaching and what impact is it having, but what am I doing as a coach that's working for them? Mm. Not what am I doing that I love doing because yeah, it's my hobby. Absolutely. Or, you know, but what, what am I doing that actually is getting a result for them? So that's, that's kind of one area. The other thing that I do to prepare is a little min one minute stop, so a little one minute stop and review. So wherever I'm coaching, I sometimes I do this in the car, I do it sitting in my office, I'll do it even sometimes sitting in a reception of a, an organisation. I literally just stop, breathe into the diaphragm, and really get myself into a coaching state. So I've worked out, you know, I've calibrated what is my state for coaching, and how do I re-energise that, almost bring it back into the muscle before I go and coach someone. And I just do that simply by sitting still and breathing into the diaphragm and just getting the state before I mm. see the individual. Yeah. So no matter what's been happening beforehand, for the next hour, two hours, however long, however long I'm with the client, you know, that time is theirs and every, everything great. else goes away. You know? Yeah, I think that's so important because I've seen so many coaches who go from one session to the next and doing something as simple as that gets you refreshed and make sure that you're showing up as the best coach you can be yeah. for that particular coaching session. Yeah. Is there a situation where you think people, uh, have you seen coaches over prep I have. for sessions? I have. I've seen mentors do this more actually. Mm. Um, but I've seen coaches do it too, but I think what can happen is people, when they over prep, you can see it, uh, you can hear it, <laughs> because they almost, they've, just, they've decided where the coaching is going to go before mm. they've even started having the conversation. Yes or where the mentoring's going to go before they've even had the conversation. I think sometimes in mentoring, it's easy to do that because you, you, you know, you're normally mentoring someone towards a set of outcomes that you've agreed in advance. You've normally got some kind of learning plan that you've agreed with them. And the trick there is to prepare enough to be with the client, be with the person that you're mentoring or coaching, but not so much that you get into prescribing almost how the session is going to go. Yes. Or what the outcome Scripting is going to be. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't work. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, great. Some great tips. And I'm sure you've got lots of questions. And if you've got any questions, comments, observations, please email us. The email addresses will come up at the end of this recording. And you can always contact us through the LinkedIn group, which is Business Coaching and Mentoring. And the next topic of conversation is how to coach a client who might be resistant to coaching resistant to change. Mm. So look forward to talking to you then. Thanks Marie. Thank you. Look forward to speaking to you.